Hi, I'm Dr. Amneris Luque. I'm Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Infectious Diseases at the University of Rochester Medical Center. You may have seen in the news a recent trial that was halted uh, because of lack of positive results. The trial had to do with a prevention strategy in women, and it was done in three different countries in Africa. And it required that women at high risk for HIV infection take a combination of two medications that have shown to be effective in preventing HIV acquisition in men who have sex with men. The previous trials actually were hailed as a, the new trend in prevention. As we know, antiretroviral treatment is very useful for prevention because it decreases the viral load, the amount of virus in someone's system, and transmission is reduced. So these trials were presented in two different meetings that have been published in the New England Journal of Medicine last year, indicating that if men who have sex with men take this combination medication every day, they can reduce acquisition of HIV by up to 90%. Now, it is important to note that those men who did not take the medication daily, who failed to take it, they have a reduce in the uh, protection um, from the medication. So it's important to realize that this medication may work, but it has to be taken faithfully every day. In this new study called FEMPREP, um, almost 2,000 women at risk for HIV infection were enrolled, and they were randomized, which is like flipping a coin, to receiving either the, the combination medication or placebo, which is something inactive like a sugar pill. And they were followed for about a year. And it turned out that the number of infections, HIV infections, were identical in both groups, indicating that giving women this combination medication did not have an effect in preventing HIV acquisition. Women reported having taken the pill. However, we all know from experience that self-report is not necessarily accurate. So the team of investigators now plan to look at levels of medication in the blood just to kind of pair that with the report of adherence to see if indeed those women had enough medication in their system that could have prevented the infection. In addition to that, we really don't have a lot of information about concentration of this medication in the genital secretions of women. So it could be, but for some unclear reason, women do not have enough concentration locally in the vagina and the cervix, which is where the virus will enter the body. So those are aspects of the trial that need to be analyzed in detail before we really draw firm conclusions on the inefficacy of this medication for women. This is particularly important because there was a previous trial called the CAPRISA trial that used the same medication, in fact only one of the two components, in a vaginal gel, and it proved to be highly efficacious in preventing HIV infection. So I don't think that we need to uh, throw in the towel right this minute discounting this strategy for prevention. We need to carefully look at adherence and carefully look at factors that may be specific to women, such as concentration of the medication in the cervical and vaginal areas. The other important thing is that the rate of pregnancy in the women that took the medication was 9%, so indicating that these women perhaps were not complying with their contraceptives. They were supposed to be taking contraceptives. So that in itself uh, is an indication that really we, look, we need to look at adherence very, very carefully.